My name is Jake Kelly and I serve as the president of HOSA Future Health Professionals. Today, I am delighted to continue HOSA's executive interview series. This series is designed to deliver high level industry insights to the HOSA classroom and invaluable mentoring advice to each member's college, career, and life plan exploration. To learn more about the series, upcoming guests, and how you can participate in future interviews, please visit HOSA.org and follow HOSA on social media as well as the Executive Council. Today, we'll be talking about telehealth. While it's not new to the industry, the ongoing pandemic has certainly pushed it to the forefront as both a current necessity and future disruptor of our traditional healthcare delivery system. I'm honored to speak with one of the respected leaders in telehealth, Mr. James Roxburgh, Chief Executive Officer of Telehealth at Banner Health. Thank you again for joining us, Mr. Roxburgh. We are so glad you're here with us for another installment of HOSA's executive interview series. Just take a moment to explain what telehealth actually is and why it's so important to Banner's innovative strategy. And thank you, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, telehealth's been around, as you mentioned, for a number of years. And uh, uh, it's, uh, you know, telehealth is uh, using a, 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 a video tool or audio tool to connect to uh, a patient or a member to provide some kind of, uh, of medical uh, care. And uh, it's been around for a number of years, as I mentioned, but in, uh, in the recent uh, uh, past, say, 10, maybe 15 years, as healthcare has grown and the number of specialists have diminished, um, there's a need to get the specialists to where the patient is. The benefit of telehealth are many. Uh, as an example, I can have a, a, a neurologist specializing in vascular neurology, see patients who are maybe uh, uh, having signs of symptoms of stroke. I can have them seeing patients in 10, 20, 30 different uh, hospitals. Uh, and I can get, the, get to them in a matter of minutes uh, through the use of uh, this digital technology. So there's a lot of benefits to telehealth, um, and we've seen uh, it grow tremendously in the past, uh, you know, six to nine months with the COVID uh, pandemic. And how can we deliver care uh, uh, virtually in in uh, in a safe setting that avoids use of overuse of PPE and avoids the overexposure of our practitioners? I kind of come from a rural hometown, and so. I've had some of that experience, um, just seeing telehealth in action, and um, yeah. it's really incredible. The you know, the way that what you're doing can connect with patients, like you said, in a matter of minutes. Um, yeah, I think that's extraordinary. Uh, imagine, for example, you know, in a in when somebody's having a, a, a stroke, which is basically a, an occlusion or a blood clot in the brain. There are two types of strokes. There's one that where there's a a leak in the blood vessel, uh, which is a hemorrhagic stroke. And then there's the other, which is a, an occlusion. And so the, the occlusion where it's a blood clot in the artery, if it's treated quickly, it's a, it's a dramatic turnaround in the, in the patient's uh, health. Uh, but there's a time associated with that. So imagine in the rural setting, if I could get a vascular neurologist who are typically are not practicing in a, in a, in a small rural town, if I can get them to the bedside in a few minutes to assess and uh, provide recommendation, the, the dramatic change in care that we can provide. And, and you could extend that to psychiatry, to critical care, to uh, pediatric services, any number of services. And it, it dramatically uh, levels the playing field in terms of getting uh, healthcare around the, the country and around the world, uh, really. Now, I know you've worked um, in a different number of roles in healthcare before your current role at Banner. Um, can you kind of walk us through your career path and what drew you both to Banner and to telehealth? Yeah, uh, the, the, uh, uh, let me just say this to, the, to the, those out there that are uh, in the beginning stages of their healthcare career. Healthcare is one of the best deals, and I'll tell you why. You come to work and you provide a service but you get to take care of others. And in my view, there's no better vocation than, than uh, uh, healthcare. 
And, and in our, our career, we start out with a job, which becomes a career, which can become a vocation. When a vocation means it's a calling is the, the root word, is the, what the root word means. And, and in my career, I started uh, as a, what was called an orderly or a nursing assessment. I was a teenager and my mom said, during the uh, first couple of days of summer, you need to get a job. So I, she introduced me to a skilled nursing facility, a nursing director, and that's where I started working. Uh, later, I, I became a respiratory therapist, and then later I became a registered nurse. And then uh, as it would have it, I worked my way through uh, uh, clinical leadership roles and uh, management roles, and then uh, uh, ended up developing my own uh, telehealth company, and then uh, came to Banner in this role as a, uh, in a very distinguished company. We, we uh, are in 28, uh, 20, uh, tw or six states, I have 28 hospitals, came to this company about a year and a half ago in the role of CEO of Banner Telehealth. So I've been very blessed. I've been able to work in a lot of different uh, venues and a lot of different uh, telehealth environments and have learned a lot. I love what you said about, you know, finding that that calling uh, towards the mm -hmm. end. Um, I think mm -hmm. that's something that our members are all are all looking towards. And so they're, they're really kind of looking for that. Okay, what am I being called to do? And Yeah, and so somebody may say, well, I don't really want to be a nurse. You learn care at the bedside, but from a nursing position, you can work in, you can work in the operating room, you can go into sales, you can go into research, uh, et cetera. Um, uh, so there's uh, a number of things that, that you can do uh, as you start your career and, and find out, you know, what interests you. But sometimes just getting in is, uh, is the, you know, the, the first best thing to do. And then you, you can work your way through the system. And many have said it in the, pa in the past that you sort of connect the dots in your career. Now, you kind of touched on this next point a little bit, but knowing what you now know, uh, what's the one or two pieces of advice that you wish a healthcare CEO like yourself had told you as you were mapping your college and healthcare career plans? I, that's, a, that's a really good question. I, I would say uh, 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 be open, work hard, uh, trust your gut, uh, continue to learn, uh, and then uh, 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 don't be afraid to take chances. And, and uh, you know, uh, I never started my career with a, a goal to be a CEO of, uh, you know, telehealth. I just wanted to do the best job I could. And I wanted to learn as much as I could. And as I did that, uh, opportunities opened up. And so I, I'd say uh, go to work every day and, and uh, do the best job you can, be the best teammate you can, work as hard as you can, learn as much as you can, and then opportunities will, will come your way. And, and you can't go wrong with, uh, you know, good hard work and a good attitude. And I'll, and I'll just mention in one of my previous roles, uh, uh, we uh, were short of uh, various staff members. And so uh, we actually would hire people uh, with a lot of experience who are in roles, what they call travelers. And we found out that some of these travelers had a lot of experience, but they also, uh, had maybe a little bit of an attitude, or it's not, thought they knew, you know, uh, you know, a little bit more, and, and maybe were a little bit headstrong. So one of the fellows at work for me said, "Hey, we've had we have these new students that come in, and they're uh, interns in our department, and why don't we uh, look look for the best student, and then we'll pick the best student, and then we'll train them, and we'll make them good." Uh, practitioners in our hospital. Mm -hmm. And uh, to, hit, to tell you how long ago we did that, many of these uh, students that we took on have since retired. <laughs> now, I, I know that you're personally committed uh, to education and partnerships like this, but why do you think it's important for healthcare executives and organizations like Banner to support future health professionals like you're doing with this partnership? because uh, somebody took uh, all of us under our wing at one time. And, and how are we going to develop the, the, you know, the future workforce unless uh, somebody's willing to uh, show them the ropes? And hopefully the, 
the by doing these kinds of things and showing others the ropes that we we make things a little better for the the next generation so so whoever's learning doesn't have to start from scratch as as many of us had but i i think it's our obligation you know, and that's one of my favorite things about HOSA is uh, the, these partnerships and, and giving our members the, the opportunity to learn from, you know, um, corporate bodies and, and people in various healthcare roles. Um, I think, you know, Mr. Pistarola and I have been talking when, when a lot of our students think of HOSA, they think of being a doctor or a nurse. They may not think about working in telehealth or, you know, being an executive in, in a healthcare company. And so, mm-hmm. um, no, I, and I, I, I think I speak for all of our members when I say that we appreciate, um, you know, what you just said about showing us the ropes and, and you know, kind of showing us what's possible and, and getting us started. Yeah, when you think about healthcare, there's many roles. I, you know, I, I, I worked as a nurse's aide. We called them orderlies back then. I've worked as a physical therapy assistant. I've worked as an exercise physiologist, as a respiratory therapist, as a nurse. So there's a lot of different types of uh of uh, career opportunities. And, and as I mentioned earlier, once you get in and you find out maybe that isn't your cup of tea, but you're learning and then you say, hey, I'd like to, uh, I'd like to go into research or I'd like to uh, uh, become a nurse or maybe I'd like to, to continue on to medical school. So, uh, you know, but you have to start somewhere. And if you don't start, you'll never get anywhere. So as you may know, uh, HOSA has a very large footprint in Banner's key markets like Arizona and California. What role could our members play in helping Banner make healthcare easier so life can be better in the communities that we serve and live? It's a good question. You know, right now there's a challenge with uh, uh, students due to the pandemic uh, situation, but you know, we know that's gonna pass. Uh, uh, coming in uh, with a uh, uh, a uh, sort of a supportive role for whatever services is, is being uh, rendered. Maybe somebody has an interest in computer science so they can help on the technology or somebody is interested in uh, uh, patient care so they could help, you know, pass meals and uh, do, you know, simple things. Um, so as, as um, uh, the, the best way for a student to learn is to kind of follow and, and do, and, and a lot of times they're, they're menial roles, but you know, that's where we all have to start. So uh, uh, I think that's the best way to, you know, for students to uh, uh, kind of find out where, what career path they want to take is to get into the workforce, watch, uh, do some of the lower level things and, and that's what it takes. And then you'll see if it, you have an interest in that area. Yeah, like like you've, you've mentioned, it's just kind of getting, getting started and, you know, seeking that, that, uh, that first step. And, um, yeah. I think I think all of our members, you know, once once the pandemic kind of passes and they're able to get more involved, um, would we'll, we'll definitely love to be involved with what Banner's doing um, in their communities. And I kind of mentioned this earlier. One of my passions is access to care in rural communities, seeing as I'm from a rural community. I know that's central to Banner's business. Why is that? And what's your strategy for serving these underserved communities? Well, because we're in the health, we're in the the uh, healthcare business. So uh, our role is to take care of people um, and to do it in a way that is fiscally responsible, of course, uh, because if you, if you, uh, uh, you know, can't uh, uh, manage the business well, you're not going to be able to provide good care. So, um, uh, and, and uh, people need care. It doesn't matter whether you're in a rural setting or a, 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 a big city, you still need care. How can we deliver it? And how can we get the specialists to those areas? And that's where telehealth comes in. And then as we look at uh, where telehealth is going, um, it's going towards what's referred to as value-based care. And basically what that means is how do we manage the patient's care in the most cost-effective way? And when I say that, that means uh, uh, the incentive for the for the doctors so they can make money, the incentive for the health systems and health plans so they can make money. Uh, you have to have that kind of incentive and you have to have the ability to make money. That's just the way the world works. But in order to, if you do it in the, in the, the right way, in a value-based uh, care system, the patient can win because the incentive is to keep the patient well. And so that's where telehealth comes in. You know, if you look at back in the old days, uh, uh, 
uh, pre uh, uh, DR, pre DRGs or or even uh, pre Medicare and Medicaid, where everything was fee for service. You did something, you got paid for it. And then when Medicare and Medicaid come in, uh, the more you did, the more the government paid. And so the incentive was a little bit skewed. And so the more the hospital did, the more they got paid. It it actually increased the uh, the uh, uh, elevation in our our technology, but the incentive was kind of wrong. In the, the mid 80s with diagnostic related groups, they put a, a, a cap, so to speak, on the different diagnoses. And so uh, you only the hospital only gets so much for a Medicare patient for uh, uh, providing care. And then you had managed care that came in. And so you took a population uh, where you would manage them. Uh, and sort of then the, the next wave is what we refer to as value-based care. So uh, and as Wayne Gretzky said, you skate to where the puck is going to go. If you're going to wait till the puck's there and skate there, you're going to miss it. Somebody else is going to grab it. So we need to think of, and this is what telehealth is doing, how can we provide the best care to our patients or the best care to our members or the population? And, and this, is, this is the way that, that I think, and this is the way that my team thinks. And so if I can... If I can connect with you virtually in your home and provide the assessment and the care in your home and everything's done, think of how much uh, uh, time and travel we've saved. Uh, 60 miles away in my office and, and you can't get an appointment for three months. Well, your, your health may deteriorate and, and maybe you skip the appointment because you can't get away from work. Right. So um, uh, if we expand that, uh, the possibilities are almost endless. Um, and then I'm going to go back to the, uh, the stroke example. You know, when someone has a stroke, it's a debilitating disease and it can leave somebody with a, with a, in a situation where they, they can't even care for themselves. So imagine I can get a neurologist to see that patient in a matter of minutes. They can recommend the therapy for that patient, the treatment for that patient and turn them around versus the debilitating situation they may be in for the rest of their lives. Right. So, so when you talk about you know, where healthcare is going, um, value-based care is the way we need to think. That's how your generation should be thinking. And then how do we apply the technology to meet that need? I've been taking some public health classes in my university. And one thing that we kind of studied was, or I studied specifically, and I, so I'm from Tennessee. I don't know if I mentioned that. Um, mm -hmm. The number of rural hospitals that keep closing in Tennessee, um, yeah. you know, either yeah. because people just can't get to those hospitals or, you know, they don't have good experiences or something like that. And the money is just not there. But the more research yeah. I did, the, the more I realized that a lot of people just can't get to the hospital, bringing that care to the patient if we can. And, you know, mm -hmm. making sure that the care is, like you said, value-based and, and making sure that what we do for the patient is for the patient. Well, uh, you've raised a, a couple of good points. In healthcare, I always like to say follow the money because that's where the incentive is. In a, in a, when, in a rural hospital, what keeps their doors open? Well, they have to be able to make money. And how can you make money if a patient in a rural setting uh, is simply transferred to a tertiary center for care. And this is one of the beauties of telehealth is I could get the expert uh, physician to that bedside to treat the patient in that hospital. So the money stays in the community, the patient stays in the community. Right. And, and that's where you, uh, we level set, so to speak, uh, you know, uh, uh, using the telehealth technology and the, the workflows that go along with it. If you go to a tertiary center, a uh, uh, a hospital with a lot of uh, specialists. They have a cardiologist, a pulmonologist, a nephrologist, et cetera. If right. I'm a, uh, a patient in that hospital and I need that kind of specialty, they're practically down the hall. Um, through the, the, uh, uh, the value of telehealth can get those take same kind of specialists to that remote hospital so the patient can stay there. The hospital can make money. The, the, the uh, patient stays in their community, et cetera. And then instead of just transferring them, you know, get sick and transfer, they right. only transfer uh, when there's an appropriate need for what we refer to as interventional care 
or a higher level of care where you have to do some kind of surgery or some procedure. But shifting gears just a little bit, one of my leadership values is seeing others succeed. Can you speak to that from both your personal point of view and Banner's culture? I, I believe that uh, a, uh, a good manager, uh, a, a good leader um, is all about their team. And if a, a manager or leader thinks that everything's about them, they got a problem. So our role is to develop the, the team. There's a lot more brains in the team there are in a, in a single manager. And so uh, uh, as, a, uh, as a leader and, and you as a leader, uh, your responsibility is to develop those that are, are new and, and students. It's your it's your responsibility and my responsibility to develop our team so that they can become the best that they can. And, and we develop a synergy and, and uh, you know, my, my uh, strong philosophy as a manager is that I, I, uh, I preach uh, oneness. We don't have to necessarily agree. In fact, sometimes good sparring is encouraged because that's where good ideas come from. But at the end of the day, we, have, we work on a ground of oneness where we, we work with a goal of winning. Um, it, you know, it, it's not about somebody being right. It's about winning and it's about the team winning. And I think uh, that's, where we, uh, that's where a good leader focuses. So we just have two quick questions here for you. Um, the first one being this week, the U.S. has experienced a spike in COVID-19 cases. Through our previous discussions, you mentioned that you were having to deploy to one of the hotspots to address the ongoing pandemic with your colleagues. Do you care to tell us a little bit about that experience and kind of what Banner's plan is moving forward? Uh, Banner has uh, been very proactive and, uh, and, and we know when uh, there's the beginning of a surge and, and uh, we have some very smart people that look at the data and can tell when there's, uh, there's gonna be a more of intensity in an area. Um, and so as we do that, then we deploy uh, teams there uh, and, and, you know, such as myself to say, how can we help? Uh, and in my, my situation, how can we support with telehealth in terms of the need of getting the specialists to the bedside? And, and also, how can we use telehealth to avoid uh, the nurses or the doctors to have to go into the, into the patient's room so often? You do have to go in, obviously, to do uh, some physical exam and, and some types of procedures. But through the use of telehealth, we can uh, communicate with the patient. We can do a quick assessment with, without having to gown up. So we save the PVE and we uh, avoid overexposure. So um, uh, there's a lot of planning that goes into it. There's a lot of uh, statistical analysis to find out where does it look like the, the problem is going to be. And then, and then we engage as a as a good team would and, uh, and, and deploy and, and implement. Can you reflect on maybe a teacher or a, you know, a, an advisor that helped you lead or help lead you to where you are today? Yeah, I've been very fortunate as I, I'm sure uh, many uh, are that to have, have had some very good mentors. And um, uh, as I said, someone that uh, taken me under their wing and criticized me in, in a good way and, and sort of guided me. Um, and I, I'll say the uh, just to be very general, the uh, the the advice that that uh, has been given to me, which I give, is um, you know, always do your best, right. always do your best, and and have a purpose in what you're doing, and then work hard. And and you you know you you really can't go wrong with those uh, you know with, with that sort of an attitude. And then there's a, a another. Uh, uh, set of uh, experiences that I've, I've uh, sort of figured out on my own. Um, and the, the first one is be sincere. Mm -hmm. We're always going to make mistakes, but if we're sincere, uh, people will know that you're, you're doing your best. Mm -hmm. Do the right thing. Uh, it means do the right thing and follow through. And I think if, if we're sincere, if we do the right thing and we follow through, we can't go wrong. And then the last thing I add, in, and you have to smile every now and then. So uh, th those are some of the things that I've been blessed with uh, learning uh, sort of through uh, 
my experience, but also through some of the the mentors that I've had the the uh, uh, you know the good fortune of working under and working with. Well, Mr. Roxburgh, we thank you so much. Um, I've learned a lot from this conversation just with you, and I've really enjoyed speaking with you. And on behalf of Hosts, two hundred forty nine thousand members. Thank you for your time and, and a really, truly fascinating discussion. Honored. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you. And we look forward to continuing our dialogue with you and your colleagues to develop future health professionals for Banner and the health industry as a whole. To our viewers, if you want to watch this interview again or read or watch the full length interview, you can share it with others or learn more about the executive interview series and how you can participate in future interviews. Please visit HOSA.org or any of HOSA's social media cha channels. Also, please feel free to follow me at Jake underscore Kelly 47 and all of our executive council officers on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. To learn more about Mr. Roxburgh and telehealth at Banner Health, go to bannerhealth.com slash about forward slash innovation forward slash Banner Telehealth. Or follow Banner on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube and Mr. Roxburgh on LinkedIn. Again, thank you, Mr. Roxburgh for joining us and thank you members for watching be on the lookout for the next installment of our inter executive interview series. Have a great night.